Hello there! In this video, I'll be painting this desert landscape in Krita. Here's the first version next to the new sketch. That one was drawn for posting on Instagram. This time, I want to convert the scene into a background layout, so the new sketch is on a wider 16 by 9 ratio. To answer the question in the title, a background layout is usually the line art of a background for animation. Nowadays, depending on the art direction, background layouts are also rendered with textures and lighting, practically a black and white painting. I took a CGMA class last year on drawing background layouts, so that's my very simplified personal understanding from how my instructor explained it. Taking what I learned from that class, I rendered this in black and white first before adding color. With the gradient tool, I established the general lighting direction with the radial gradient. While that checkbox saying reverse is ticked on, the gradient is transparent at its center. Then I raised any excess to push the darkness away. But it doesn't erase the darkness in my heart. I filled in the major shapes with the shapes fill brush, which is a default Krita brush. It acts like a lasso tool without the step of using a bucket tool. The color is already applied as the brush is dragged along. The coyote pose is essentially the same as the original, this stalking, prowling pose. In case I rig and animate this again, I divvied the limbs up into their own layers. I didn't copy and paste the original coyote because there were subtle differences that I wanted to implement. It's slightly looking towards the foreground now and the pose is sleeker with harsher angles. I split the value scale apart to visually divide it among the layers. As the focal point of the scene, the coyote will have the darkest values to contrast it against the lightness of the sky. Then the middle grounds lighten up as atmospheric perspective fades the landscape away. Here's how the values look so far with that initial gradient. I saved this into its own layer to remind myself of the target values. But spoilers, I didn't strictly follow it as I realized some new lighting tricks along the way. I proceeded to paint the textures and details in, starting with the background. The sky is roughly painted with the default brush called Wet Bristles Rough, which is under the paint category. This brush has some smudgy blending properties, good for softening the clouds up too. I used another default brush for these canyon edges, the bristles flat rough from the paint category. Painting edges with this leaves behind these stray lines for controlled imperfections on a geometric style. They could be attributed to heat distortion in the distance, but in general, I like painting this effect on anything in Krita. This new brush is a texture brush from a concept art pack by Paitio. Link in the description. Anything rocky in this painting will have a passive texture with this brush. Added some shadows on the canyon. And some bloom light from the sky. For the foreground, I again used the gradient to establish the general shading. I work with the tones to sculpt how the sand flows. Sand may be coarse and rough, and it gets everywhere, but it can be made interesting by imagining sand like their waves flowing around the plants and rocks. If there's dull space, I can cover that area with a wave of sand to make the ground more dynamic. At this point, I'm not following the target values anymore. I went rogue by introducing a lighter tone to build contrast on the foreground. I lassoed the selection, then brushed in on areas where the lighting would peak on the sand, especially on this smaller rock. I started painting from one edge of a lasso selection, then let the highlight fade to the other edge. Painted in the shadows casted by the rocks. David Revoice brush set has this battery particle brush, that's another link in the description. I sprinkled it here and there to make it look like patches of sand where wind had gusted over. Like the canyons, I did a texture pass over these foreground rocks then brushed in the shading and sandstone banding. With the major shapes done, I could focus on the specific details which are the plants. It's best to go from general to specific. Work on the big picture first. 
Otherwise, going ham on a small asset might make it too much work than it's worth. It would look out of place amongst the established art direction. When populating a layout with repetitive details like plants, there's a rule called big, medium, small. Following this helps diversify the details. So there's a big shrub in the foreground, and small and medium shrubs a bit further away. Added some even tinier plants on the midground. And the last of the textures is the coating on the coyote. I already applied the dry brush treatment on its outline and the effect makes it look ragged and dangerous. Every asset is textured, time to refine the lighting. I adjusted the levels to improve the contrast, and instead of relying on that master gradient, I gave each plane their own gradient for more control. Kritas adjustment layers are called filter layers. They can be created by going to this menu next to the add layer button and choosing filter layer. On the pop-up, the level controls are under the adjust category. So that's for improving the contrast on the textures. To give this plane a push from the background, I added a linear gradient set to multiply. Another coat of highlight on the foreground. In a cinematic composition, the focal point is supposed to anchor the eyes to the scene first. That's the coyote. Then the highlights on the slope is a factor for guiding the eyes across the rest of the composition. After shading the coyote, I gave it glowing eyes as if it wasn't menacing enough. Just a hint that this isn't a normal coyote. I gave it a cast shadow to stay consistent with the rock's cast shadow. Here's the black and white layout. In a studio pipeline, the layout artist would hand this over to a background colorist, but I'll do that job myself. To color over black and white, I made a filter mask called Gradient Maps, which is under the map category. This lets me assign two colors to the value spectrum of a layer. For the sky, I gave the darker grays a pinkish hue while the lighter grays have a greenish hue. The gradient map does a good job of adding colors. On its own, it still looks flat. They needed some extra layers of texture and soft lighting. If the colors weren't showing, I just slid the nodes to fix that. So to reiterate, the steps in this coloring phase was to set the gradient map, then color that gradient layer, the gradient layer that I'm using for shading. I went for warm reddish hues on them. These hues trick the values into looking like it's not that dark. If I lose any textures, or if the colors aren't dynamic enough, I make another layers for fixes and additions. I'm following the colors from the original since it has a good foundation already. Just improving it with better lighting, to make it look more ominous despite the daylight setting. I painted the original a year ago, and back then I was still shy about lighting. That background design class was really helpful in breaking that barrier. Turns out, I needed more gradients and airbrushing. Well, I wish it was that simple. On principle, lighting is supposed to serve visual drama, but the how was a nebulous concept for me. I've since learned that lighting doesn't have to be photorealistic. I mean, I draw cartoon-style backgrounds, so unrealistic should be a given. But unrealistic should not mean boring. Lighting just has to be bolder by building contrasts, using gradients, and setting the focal point. But sometimes, it do be as simple as applying gradients and airbrushing. Adding subtle god rays was my final touch, so cue the montage. These were my color scripts and the first version. I extended that scene into a 16x9 layout, planned the values out and rendered the textures first. And finally, the colors that were added with gradient maps and linear gradients. As a bonus, here's how I laid this out for my portfolio. The final art takes up most of the space, while the previous steps in the process surround it. I even included traditional sketches of the smaller elements. The green bars are my guide to keep spacing consistent, while the gray bar will contain my profile info. And thanks for watching!
Let me know in the comments what you think about this video. Feedback would be very helpful. As well as liking and subscribing for more art videos. I'll see you guys next time and bye!